So, hi. Hi, guys. Hi! <laughs> The other day, I went to the thrift store a few days ago, and I found this amazing yarn there. It is a hand-dyed wool yarn. I've never heard of this brand, but when I saw hand-dyed and I saw 100% wool, she was already in my, my cart. My idea for this yarn is to make one of those sheer, you know, really cute tops. These type of tops. I might use some other colors just because there's so many different tops up there where they use like different colors and I really love that. But I'm just gonna start off with this yarn just because it is hand dyed and you can see there's lots of colors going on. I wanna see how this kind of looks before I go in and start adding more colors because I might not. I might just keep it one color, but probably not. Get your socks on tight because you guys are gonna see some magic right here. Isn't that so cool? Oh, this is like my best purchase of my life. Yarn is done. Next step, you need your needles. And I'm using a very, very chunky set of needles, the chunkiest one I have. They're a 15 millimeter. And I'm just gonna cast on. I'm gonna start with making the front or the back. They're pretty much the same. And we're gonna be making pretty much a square. Yeah, a square. So for this sweater today, we are going to be doing the freehand technique. I don't really know if that's what it's called, but pretty much I'm not using a pattern and I don't want to count stitches. I just want to freehand it. So I cast it on a decent amount of stitches here. And this is why I like circular needles, not because I like knit in the round, just because I can pull it like this and then measure it to see if it's going to fit. I think this one's gonna to be too big, so I'm gonna take some off. There we go. Still too big. And I really overachieved on this. Yeah, this feels good. So I should recommend that you wanna make sure that all your cast on stitches are even because now we're doing ribbing. I usually start from the bottom up, so I'm doing a one by one rib. And if they're not even, then it can just get messy. But usually I just wing it and it works out. Ooh, look at this. Come on, focus. Look at that. Look at her. I think I'm gonna do three rows. No, four rows. I'm gonna do four rows. Done the four rows, but my dog has to pee, so I'll tell you about the rest when I get back. Let's go pee, Bison. Let's go outside. We're back. So for the knitting now, I'm just gonna do the basic stockinette stitch. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just gonna do a stockinette stitch, and I'm gonna do that for a while. I'm gonna do it until I wanna stop. Doesn't this look so good? So we're just gonna take a quick break from the knitting because today's video is sponsored by Care Of. Can I help you? You want up, okay. If you haven't heard of Care before, they are a monthly subscription service that actually sends you personalized and high quality vitamins right to your door. With Care Of, all you have to do is take a quiz and they will give you a personalized recommendation of vitamins from all your answers. So I took the quiz and I got my personalized vitamins here and the ones I'm taking are pretty straightforward. So personally, I eat mainly plant-based, so I do take vitamins to supplement for some of the vitamins that I'm not getting from all of my foods. So a few of them are vitamin B12, a vegan vitamin D, a vegan omega-3, and an iron. I'm also taking other vitamins to help with other places, but those are the main ones that I got towards my plant-based diet. So my favorite thing about Care Of is it makes it really easy to take vitamins, especially if they're taking a lot, which I tend to do. So each day I just simply pull out one of these and it says, hi Jenna, it's personalized to me. It also has like a nice little quote or phrase on there and you just open this up every single day, take it with my morning water, and then I actually throw this bag in the compost after. If you guys wanna take the quiz and try out Care Of, the link is down below in the description to take the quiz and to see what you guys are recommended. You guys can also get 50% off your first order if you guys use the coupon code JennaP50 at checkout and you'll get 50% off. So I got an air fryer for Christmas, so I've been air frying a lot of things and yesterday I realized that you can make the most perfect yam fries in your air fryer and I made them perfect yesterday. But today, I burnt them. I burnt them. Look at that, I burnt it.
Doesn't really taste burnt though, it still tastes good. I'm getting back on the train of um, the sweater. Might have noticed that I am not, or still not, continental knitting. I'm just, you know, the old fashioned English way knitting, and um, there is a reason for that. Here's a balaclava I made. Here's the ribbing, normal English. And here's my other balaclava that I just recently redid a little bit because it wasn't fitting the best. And um, this is my continental. It looks like a trash bag. I'm just not very good, so I'm just doing it this way and practice maybe on things that I, I don't care about, but I care about this, so I'm just gonna try to make it perfect, even if it's slower. So some of the trendy designers out there, or just designers, just designers out there, um, they have been doing this thing for a while that I've noticed where they drop stitches, so there's like a hole in the knit, or it doesn't look very perfect, like it's very rough, knitting like it's very handmade looking so I'm gonna try that I'm supposed to knit this one next but nope oh shoot so my favorite thing is that you can pretty much decide as you go so I didn't go into this thinking hey it's gonna be really you know long the top where it's gonna be like this long and I didn't go into it saying it was gonna be this short. Like, I'm just deciding as I go and just like, you know, checking in the mirror, seeing what I like. I'm thinking about like this length, you know, cropped, so I could wear like this shirt underneath it, but not like cropped, cropped, you know? I really need to learn some like dance moves that I can just like pop, you know, like whenever I feel like it. Like, but like a really cool dance move where like people would be like, Whoa, really cool, easy dance move. Oh, that one, the Billy Bounce. That's the one I want to learn. Eight, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in. Just that they shared one similarity, a control number. MC2880. Deputy Medical Examiner Donahue says. Fun fact I can't say Massachusetts. Massachusetts. This is going to be the back piece, so I feel like I want it a tad longer in the back, just so. I don't know. I just want it a little bit longer in the back. So this is how long I'm going to make it. So I'm going to cast off this piece. And then I'm pretty much gonna replicate this for the front, except I'm gonna do like a little neck piece, you know, there, but. Yeah, you don't worry about that now. No, that's future Jenna. So I did lie about not having to count this freehand method. You do have to count a little bit because obviously we're making two pieces, a front and a back. So we gotta count how many stitches are here. <laughs> So we're pretty much gonna recreate the same piece we did for the back, so we're gonna start off with the ribbing, the same stitches, everything's the same, except when we get closer to the top, then we're gonna start making the neck shape. But you don't have to worry about that until you get to the top. And you technically don't even need to do this. You could create two rectangle square shapes and you could still make a sweater that way. For some reason, this last piece I've been working on, I have just been like a speed racer. I just like knocked this out in like a couple hours and I'm already ready to do the neck. So typically I start off by putting the back piece down first, then I put the front piece on top, then I just measure out if it's like the right size for a neck piece to start to be added in. I then just mark out where I want the neck piece to be in the center. So I think I marked out about 15 stitches on each side. You want it to be even, nice and centered in the middle. Then I typically do one shoulder at a time. So I knit all the way up to the stitch marker. I flip it around, then I start doing a purl stitch backwards and then I knit again. And when I get there, then I leave two stitches off and then I knit back the shoulder again and then I cast off and then for all the stitches in the center I just take a spare scrap piece of yarn I just thread it through every single person does a neck you know different but this is just one way you can do it 
we have our front piece, our back piece, and we have one arm done, which I didn't show you how to do this arm. I got very carried away last night and just pumped this out so fast, but now I'm gonna show you how to make the arm. So personally, I want my sleeve to be like a little loose. I don't want it to be too tight. So I started off with 22 stitches, but for these needles, personally, when I'm making a sweater, I usually do about 18 stitches cast on, but I want a little bigger. So I went with 22. And typically my go-to pattern for making sleeves is every sixth row, I add two stitches, except for this one. This one, apparently I did 16 rows of not adding stitches and then I did that formula like every six row. Both arms are done, both sleeves. Now we're just gonna work on the top here. So I'm gonna put the shoulders together first, do the neck and then we'll attach the arms and then Bob's your uncle because we're done. So I'm starting off with just doing a basic invisible shoulder seam for both shoulders and then once those are done you can go ahead and you can feed through you know our loops onto our needles again and then I'm just adding stitches for the side and the back of the collar there because now we're working on the collar. I like to do my collars with the magic loop method so I'm just going around and around and around and around in a one by one rib and then every single round I'm changing the needles just slightly down so I went from a 15 mil to a 12 mil and then eventually I went to a 10 mil just so it got tighter and tighter and tighter up my collar because I wanted it to be kind of like a turtleneck. For some reason I'm getting like a little bit of granny vibes which typically I love I love some granny vibes granny vibes but not really this granny vibe hear me out gonna continue on the collar I'm gonna switch to blue and then I'm gonna switch to this brown and do a nice turtleneck and then maybe bring some of the blue and brown here maybe when I'm connecting the arms but then once I was done the turtleneck the last part was just to add the arms and how I do that is I just like to line up the center to the center seam and then here I'm doing a little bit of crochet so it's not your technical knitting binding I don't know but I'm just doing a single crochet stitch to connect them because I wanted to add a little bit more color and just I don't know personal style I guess and then I did the same thing for connecting the arms and the side there except I use a different yarn to add even more color I just used a white wool yarn. It's really soft. But there it is. That's my sweater. To be honest, I didn't think it was going to turn out this well. Like, I'm just very impressed. I'm very impressed with myself because I really, very much, a lot like this top. <laughs> I think it's so cute. I feel like you have to see it up close to see all the detail just because you can see the hole here here you can see the detail of the arm here the collar the underneath all our danglers here which i feel like i'm gonna keep i tucked in all the other danglers the arm and the collar but not the ones under the arms here just because i kind of liked that look we, we might change our mind in the future but for right now look at her not really sure how to style her yet. I'm just wearing some like brown pants. No top underneath. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed making this self-drafted winging it knit top. Freehand, freehand knit top. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys do make your own, freehand knit top. Be sure to tag me on Instagram at Jenna Phipps because I just like seeing what you guys make. But that's it. So I'm gonna go. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.